It will haunt you every night. Whatever it is, no one should have to encounter that kind of evil. Except you girls, I think you can handle it. Oh, all good, thanks. We have a gift. We see what no one else is willing to see. We do things others can't do. Ghostbusters. If there's a paranormal problem, we're the ones to answer the call. Hello. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What do we think of these Ghostbusters? Are they to be taken seriously? You take that aisle, I'll take the far one. OK, you sweaty freaks. I'm about to save you from this ghost. Ah! Okay, so I don't know if it was a race thing or a lady thing, but I'm mad as hell. There's a bigger picture at hand here. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Hey guys, check it out. Kevin, come inside. I was born to be a Ghostbuster, all right? Oh man, that's so not good. Something big is gonna happen. The word we're looking for is apocalypse. You want a piece of this? Yeah! The government's trying to claim the event isn't supernatural. We don't want a panic. We don't want mass hysteria. Get out of the city! Get out of the city! I will kick the unliving crap out of you! And you! Especially you! <laughs> hey! Don't move! You gotta, uh... No. I'm tired. No, no. Listen. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. How about that? I, I don't really think that's a good idea. No. Nope. Going to take off. Don't piss off the ghost. Really? I just honestly didn't realize your department still existed. What? Oh, come on, ghosts? I will not let the 12 year reputation of this fine institution be besmirched by you. Oh, come on. Suddenly, this place has a classy reputation to uphold? You're only Dean now because the last Dean went to jail. Are you saying that I'm not qualified? You spell science with a Y. And what's upsetting about that is I don't think you know that that's wrong. This is an institution of higher learning. And if you guys want to study ghosts, do it somewhere else because I have two words for you. Let me guess, get out? No, he's gonna say suck it. He's not gonna say suck it. Suck it. You were right. Hi. <laughs> OMG. Oh my God. What does that mean, Steve? L O L and A O L. What, oh, girl? First of all, what a fun trade. Wasn't that fun, you guys? <laughs> Come on, let's hear it for New York City! First of all, <laughs> every time, every single time, I love New York City. I'm not gonna lie about that. That I saw the movie last night twice, at home, in a private screening room with a pool. Um, how fun! You guys must be very happy, yes. very happy, and very, really crazy happy. happy. Yes. Just how good! I gotta say. You guys are gonna love this when you see it. See it in the theater. I'm gonna see it in my own private theater. <laughs> 1,700 seats. I hire people to dress like they're from the 20s. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I'm gonna. My first question is going to go to you, Melissa, because you're right here. Bring it on, Higgins. You're probably too young to remember this, but in, 17, in 1783. <laughs> no. How much fun did you have making this movie? Can I ask you that? Um. It was kind of ridiculous. The fact that Paul Feig had any footage to actually cobble together a film is shocking. Um, truly, there were just times where I feel like you just, it was a lot of like, <laughs> and you just hear Paul going, uh, ladies, we're still shooting. We're still shooting. And just bad bits. And I don't know, it was just so fun. If that's how you go to work and you're like, oh God, if I could just stop laughing so much, we'd get more done. Like, if that's our big problem at work, I, I will show up every day. So the riff gun was on high. The what's that? The riff gun. <laughs> Riffs were constantly being done 24 hours a day, seven yes. days a week, 24. That's what I meant to say. Yes. And Kristen, <laughs> you who are one yes. of the most fantastic dancers oh. that I know of in this you're world. Here. Thank you. 
every time you dance, I swear to God, when I was watching this, I thought there's a shot of Kristen dancing where they show her feet. She is the most funny, the, the funniest dancer in the free world. Do funny or good? Good. Good, okay. Good. Okay. Funny I was trying, to, I was trying to dance funny really well. Like this cheese smells funny. Okay. Yeah. That kind of right. funny. But you still like to eat it. Okay. But when you dance with this in this movie, I have to say, you took it up to another level. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just went with it. I didn't plan anything. I didn't choreograph anything. You just let the spirit I just let you? the music Hi. take me away. But there was a bit of mom dancing inspiration. Yes, there a little... Am I really loud? Um, my character is a little bit... Um, Hold it closer. Closer, closer, so like that. No, that's too close. I've never used a mic. Um, She's very straight laced, so I did try to think of like how she would kind of like get down. Just when you see it, just really, my personal enjoyment was really, really watch Kristen's dancing fingers. Yes. (laughs) It's my, it's literally the joy of my life, and I love my children. But But. Kristen's fingers while (laughs) she dances is like truly my favorite thing. Oh. Your mind, like, your snake, your I don't talk in the movie. Yeah, this is silent. I don't dance. Her character, <laughs> a spell is cast on you, and you don't have give no it voice. Away. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't spoiler. talk about the spell. Spoiler alert. Kate McKinnon. What? Hello. Now, you, this is your first giant movie, <sighs> one movie yeah. where you play a giant. <laughs> Am I, is that another spoiler? You're giving so much away. <laughs> Stop. Right. No, there were giants in this. <laughs> it's like Land of the Giants. Uh-huh. Your scene, too, at the end, I don't want to give anything away, but when you give your little toast, that is oh, no. a delight oh, to I see. Thank you so much. It is so, this film is so full. Who likes joy? Not the movie Joy. I love that, too. I love that people, movie, too. I love J Law, everybody. They love Joe. Oh, they're talking about I'm talking about okay. the emotion oh. Joy. No, no takers. Oh, no wow. takers. Okay. Who likes good times? Four. Not the TV Four. show. My God. All right. Who, uh, this movie is fun. Who likes fun? Not the band. Damn it. <laughs> I love the band, too. Shh, I'm messing this You're up. You're ruining this. Kate, you are wonderful in this movie. Thank you so much. I have to say, watching you, I've known all of you for many years. This is why this is so casual for me. Um... <laughs> Paul, I've known since 19... Uh, yes. <laughs> and Kristen, I've probably 10 some years. Yeah, yeah. Kate, five some years. Five, approaching five and a half. Approaching five and a half. Weeks. I did My get God. a cake. You did. <laughs> you have your Don't big worry, there six is a year watch. coming up. <laughs> there is a watch in the mail coming to my house for me. <laughs> and Melissa, I've known you for many years. 72. Too. 72, 1972. 72 we started together. We were extras, again, in good times, the show. <laughs> I knew that. We played the two mean white kids. <laughs> Paul Feig. Yes, Steve. Besides being the haberdasher's best friend, yes. you are known for humorous movies involving ladies. And this one is, uh, you could put a jewel in your crown. It's so fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Thank and you. so when you were doing this the whole time, it, you must have said, I can't do Ghostbusters. I can't do it. Okay, I know how I'll do it if I can get these ladies. Yeah, it was exactly that. I actually turned it down a couple of times because Ivan had come to me, which is, you know, when Ivan Reitman calls you to direct you know, a continuation of his franchise. It, it's, it's a sobering thing, because he's one of my heroes. Um, but I just, I was, it's too scary, because it's canon, you know? It's like yeah. re- making The Godfather or something. But once I kind of thought, well, okay, if I was gonna do this, how would I do it? And really said, well, the reason that first movie worked so well is because the idea behind it is awesome, but it's really because those people in that cast, those four guys, and then the amazing people around them, Moranis and, you know, Sigourney and all that, were the, at the top of their game that time, and thought, well, it's this amazing idea. There's a showcase for talented people. Why should it kind of be trapped in amber back in, you know, 32 years ago when we have all these amazingly funny people now, and thought, if I could work with the funny women that I know, then and showcase them through this great idea, then that, that gives me energy. And so that's when I said, okay, let's do it. And also, they all gave their blessing. Oh, everybody! I mean, everybody from top to bottom has been involved with this. It's, it's, it's really not. I, I don't. I don't think I would have done it had the original cast and everybody not been on board because uh, it's just too much of a responsibility to, you know, to not do it without their approval. 
And then the next one you're working on is an all-woman godfather. Is that yes. No. It's an all-chimpanzee version of Back to the Future. So, really? Uh, that won't cause any problems. All chimp. Yeah, whatsoever, <laughs> exactly. All chimp to the future. Yeah, all chimp. Yeah, chimps to the future, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So it's like Planet of the Apes. Yeah. But not. Right. Wow. You can see how that would the work. The way the mind works. Right. This guy, watch him. But they're all female chimps. So, uh, female yeah, chimps. just so I can get some extra. Now you're, you now go. you're gonna get some, you're gonna get some. Now you're gonna get some. Now you're talking. <laughs> That's bananas. Not the get Woody it? Allen movie. That's good. That could be on the poster. Oh my gosh, the poster is. <laughs> it's bananas. <laughs> it's girl, and the one banana swings down to make a little squeaky noise. Yep. Yeah, what? It's a living. So you guys, obviously, that was a Flintstones reference. Flintstones, again, whatever I say, tape, play it for your mother, and she'll go, oh, I get that. You guys had so much fun. I was lucky enough to visit the set for a few days, the first day of shooting. We had so shooting, much fun when you And we had so, scene. it was so fun that it was like, again, like you said, it's truly, rarely do you get a, rarely is a set that fun. I've been to a lot of sets. Killing Fields, not a fun set. <laughs> This one, super fun, super good times, and you can tell on the screen that you guys are having fun, which sometimes you cannot, but this time, again, when you guys see this movie, it's, for me, it's the perfect anecdote and antidote for bad times and craziness, and you go, you can go to a movie, get some popcorn, pay $90 for a Coke, whatever it is, <laughs> sit down, you will, you will not be sad, and you will leave the movie as my 10-year-old and I did. He was shooting me with a uh, Ghostbusters gun when the movie was done playing. So that is a high compliment <laughs> oh. to you four. Um, it's also the first time uh, I believe any of us got to see Steve uh, in shorts. That's just that's a, true. That's just a fun that fact to cross your fingers and wait You've seen me in underwear many times. Yeah, but I've never seen you <laughs> nude in underwear <laughs> and other things that I'm not, I don't want to embarrass you, yeah. but never shorts. <laughs> yes, that is true. You will see me. So if you go to this movie, just wait when, as soon as I'm done. <laughs> then you can look, because it's pretty much over after that. <laughs> now, when you guys were making this movie, and you shot most of it in Boston, that had to be, and then you got to come down to Boston. Yes, yes. Not the band. Not the band. Uh, I'm no. so bad at this. I have every too name's many taken. That's <laughs> no, every name's taken. It's the kids. That's why I'm fargaglock.com. <laughs> anyway, you, you guys. When you're shooting this movie in Boston, pretending to be New York, but the people of Boston took a shine to you guys, which was a fantastic thing to see as well. Every oh, yeah. The Boston, I, I've shot two movies there, but Melissa and I both. Uh, and it's, a, I mean, they're just, they're such nice people, and they really are more accommodating. Although you think your son, John, who worked as a PA in the movie, had a few examples where people weren't quite <laughs> happy that we were there. Exactly, they were a little, they were a little rude to him. Yeah, yeah exactly. But you know, well, that's heads. the worst job in the world. Love. It was rude with love. No, no, totally. But it is yes. the worst job in the world to be a PA uh, on a movie because you you make no money and basically you, those of us in charge go like, can you go and tell all those angry people to uh, stop at that stoplight for about five minutes while we shoot this scene of people <laughs> cracking up. Uh, and then they get a little, they get, they a, little get angry. a little irritated. <laughs> but irritation with respect. Yes, and in a Boston accent, which exactly. is always... Always sounds better. Always fun. It always makes it sound no, better. But Boston, I mean, it was the nicest. They were so nice to us and so great. And I would shoot another movie there in a heartbeat. I left my mark on Boston. We were shooting um, <laughs> in, the, in the daytime on location on a street, and there was this gorgeous onyx sculpture, and we were wearing our packs, and I was very uh, tired. So I went like this with the pack and I just went to alleviate the pressure and then sort of shifted around to try to make my back less. And then when I got up, I found that I had made a big gash in the onyx sculpture. And I never told anyone about it until now and I shouldn't have done that on camera. No, it buffed right out. It buffed right out. There was a bunch of it, it was because yeah. our packs were made of metal. They were made they were of shot. sharp metal. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> so I should have known that maybe I would have left my mark. Maybe subconsciously I was trying to. <laughs> it was not an easy job to be Yeah, exactly. It wasn't easy. Those packs were heavy. They were heavy. They really were so, heavy. They were Thank so you for <laughs> noticing. <laughs> Everything. Also, the science in this movie I enjoyed as well. 
the, it seemed like it was very accurate science to the day, and everything you mentioned was real in kind of the spirit of Ackroyd's Well, I mean, hyper. even though it's pseudoscience, it, it, right. it's, we, I wanted it based on kind of real science as much as possible, and since it's like a lot of nuclear you know, engineering and, and, and physics and all that, we hired a nuclear physicist out of MIT who was there with us the whole time so to great. bet everything. Yeah, and bet our equipment. He showed up and he's like, wait, ghosts? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're wearing that Mitt shirt, the shirt that said Mitt. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's MIT. I just got that now. I just got. They don't put period. They don't put the period, so it's confusing. <laughs> it's well, it's like fun. Fun the band is fun. Period. How am I supposed to know? I'm know. not. I'm just trying to learn. I'm on a journey. <laughs> now, you ladies. <laughs> and the fun. I tell you, it is. I. I am I'm actually overwhelmed with the amount of because I love joy. <laughs> That's why this movie was so fun to me too, because it's just good times, and there's no, there's not a, there's no, I don't, you know, there's no politics, there's no, you know, they're just you sit down and you go for a ride, yeah. and it, what a fun ride it is. Well, then I mean, that's honestly all we ever wanted to make was a yeah. fun, fun movie, and it's funny that we got embroiled in some controversy along the way because literally when you see it, it's exactly that. You go like, this literally only exists is an old-fashioned way to have fun in a movie theater for two hours, the same way we had fun 32 years ago watching the original one. Yes, which you and I remember. Yes, <laughs> very, far too well. Yes, you kids were probably too young. That was actually, I saw that a year before I met you. That's right. We met in 85, and that was I was like, yeah, because I was living in Boston. <laughs> yelling when at, the, yelling when, at when the poster came out, oh, really? oh. it was like, because that, that's the weird thing. I, oh, that's right. I was living in Boston in 80-whatever, working at a bank, and all throughout the tea in Boston was these ghosts with lines through them, and nobody knew what they were. Oh, and then it so came. Cool. They, yeah, just, then, they didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. Oh, that was their that. ad campaign, and it came out. And then what I did with with my kids is when this was done, we watched the first Ghostbusters, and then we watched you guys again, and they enjoyed it even more. So it was oh, like well, that's cool. it was. So they get the references well. exactly, and the references are what I love about them too. The Easter eggs are in there in my favorite way, where they don't stop. It isn't like, hey, take a look at this. There's so if you guys know the first one, there's enough in there for you. It just makes it a more enrich. It is Easter eggs. It's just little things planted throughout at the end. And watch the end credits, because there's a fantastic things that go on there. Again, I don't want to say. You don't want to say. Turn into a giant. But besides, <laughs> she does not turn into a giant. I am teasing. Now, Kate. Steve. Your character <laughs> comes alive in such a way that you, I think have the most fun because there's some sight gags that you do which are super delightful <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and also you are the person who f's around what i love too it's another thing of when jokes are acknowledged as jokes in movie i i like that very much and there's a few gags that you do which i don't want to give away but they're funny <laughs> where <laughs> you burn Kristen a lot i think <laughs> yeah you take a per your character in takes <laughs> yeah that My is, wardrobe. you know, you are right. I, I didn't think of it that way, but I do like when jokes are acknowledged as jokes. And I like characters that are the kind of people who make jokes. Yes. And that's, so that's what you have to do if you want to play the kind of person who makes jokes. You have to make jokes that are acknowledged as jokes. Yes. All right, I got to go. Yeah, I'll <laughs> the mic. Oh, she is Miss um, um. You guys know what we're talking about. There's a difference between a joke that happens where it's omniscient, where, where you guys are the audience and this is happening and it's not acknowledged. And then there's like when a character comes in and burns people and enjoys burning them, which is, it's very, I love it. And nothing's greater than a burn, to my, in, in my opinion, you know. Now, when you guys are making this, and again, all the hoopla online and all that kind of stuff, which you do address, I love that too, a little Easter egg. In the movie. Should we clarify that there aren't actual Easter eggs? You're right. Yes, please. Again, movie. my I'm references are so just, are too. People are going to be too, like, they're, okay. they're, people are going to think they get Easter eggs like, or okay. Cadbury eggs. Literally they do not. Decorated Easter eggs. Again, you can oh. buy East Cadbury eggs and bring them into the theater beforehand, but don't say I told you. Just I didn't want them to look. Again, you'll get a lot of trouble. I tried that once. I brought in two cases of Bud Light. To, <laughs> who would think that'd be two suitcases and a 
Coors the, Party Ball. The Bob, Bob Evans pork sausages. <laughs> my mother did once at a theater and she got thrown out. What did she do? She went, brought, uh, she went to Bob Evans pork sausage and got two sausage sandwiches. <laughs> Sat in the theater eating, and they threw her out. She said, Why would they throw me out? Because <laughs> you stunk up the theater. That's what. So. Not even like. Of all, of of all the things to bring to. Not M and M's. Two no. Bob Evans is mm. pork sandwiches. <laughs> what was the movie? Godfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, I brought that around. <laughs> well done. That's a callback. What are you saying? Well, do you guys? Does anybody have any questions for these guys? Yeah. Hi guys. Here, here we um, go. I'm really excited to have see you guys here today. Um, I would just want to know, since we're talking about Ghostbusters, do you guys believe in ghosts? And if you do, do you have any good ghost stories? <sighs> don't, don't tell that one. That's I have a story. I have a story that I thought was spooky, but my colleagues, um, <laughs> when I told it to them, were very nonplussed. And so I don't think it counts. So no. But, but it's still one of my favorite stories. I, will you please tell it? Please tell it, Kate. Please. Both parts. We you did, no, you, both didn't, parts? you didn't think it was worth anything, so no. I, I was riveted. Well, we do. I, oh, oh, fine. No, well, I, it's I, not that. No, do you want to tell yours? Do you want to tell yours? <laughs> when I was eight, get this. Me and this, uh, this other guy in my class formed a, a, a duo called the Ghost Hunters Club, okay? And um, he ate markers and I was me. We were a couple of prizes. And there was this pipe sticking out of the wall of my elementary school, an empty pipe. And we wondered what would happen if we put a stick inside of it. Okay, nothing happened. But then, then, I shit you not, this, can I say that? The stick began to vibrate and it pulled inside of the pipe and disappeared. <laughs> I swear, I couldn't make this up because it's too dumb to make up. <laughs> the stick disappeared. Was it a rat that pulled it inside? Why would a rat pull on a stick? I think it was some sort of gnome character, and so I still don't believe in ghosts, but gnomes, jury's out. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, guys. So I was wondering, um, what is the weirdest thing that a fan has ever done for you? Four or two? Two or four. <laughs> God, I'm trying to think of something weird. I don't know. Hmm. I, I did have someone very specifically once in a letter say, please immediately send me a picture of yourself in jeans. They must be <laughs> jeans. I look forward to getting your picture, in si your signed picture of you wearing jeans. Once again, please make sure they're jeans. So I went and got dressed. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for returning my letter. You're welcome. <laughs> nice. To this day, Steve loves denim. Uh, this is super exciting. You guys are uh, huge icons in the comedy world. But I wanted to know, uh, do you feel pressure or is it exciting to be a role model to young girls who want to do comedy or want to be included in things that they felt like they weren't like the Ghostbusters? Well, I think, oh. <laughs> I mean, I think that's something really um, beautiful about this movie is that um, even when we were shooting it, Paul was getting all these pictures of little kids, boys and girls, dressed up in homemade costumes and sending us really positive messages and it started to really fuel us a bit, and we're like, wow, this is like a very powerful thing that kids are responding to, and I think that's something we all responded to, which is why the controversy was so crazy, is that a Ghostbuster can be anyone. It doesn't have to be any sort of sex or race or anything. It could be anyone, and um, it is exciting that we got to be able to fill those shoes and those suits um, as women, yeah. I gave a serious answer. <laughs> One more question. Hi, guys. I'm Danielle. It's great to meet you. Hi. I was wondering, coming from more of a sketch comedy background, what was a part that was scripted and ended up ad-libbed that came out significantly better? Oh, it's hard to say. 
Well, I mean, if I can, because you can toot your own horns. But, uh, I mean, we, what we do is, you know, we always work really hard to make sure that we have an amazing script. And Katie Dippold and I really worked really hard on the script. Because what you want to do is, it's a road map, but if you get to the set and suddenly everybody goes brain dead, you at least go, okay, if we shoot this, this will hopefully be good. But for me, it's all about hiring the funniest people I know and getting to the set. And the minute you have cameras set up, and this is where so many filmmakers, especially writer-directors, fall down is because they so love their scripts and their words, <laughs> is that, you know, when they, um, you get there and it's like, that's when the magic can happen because there's, there's two people and cameras are recording them and anything can happen. Then it's like, well, just say the lines are scripted. When you have people like this and it's all about, that's when the energy starts to happen because you see how they interplay and you see the way somebody reacts to the other person. Then you go like, oh, it'd be funny if they did this. And, you know, Katie Dipple's writing jokes and handing them to me and I'm writing and then I just let them do their thing. And sometimes improv isn't like we go off on a, on a whole, you know, extravaganza it's sometimes it's just finding different wordings and when you have amazingly talented people like this it just makes my job easy because it's just like let's try anything and we'll exhaust it i mean the crew always wants to murder us at the end of every take because just like we're laughing and all this stuff and they're just listen they're like they don't think it's funny at all and then then after the longest take in the world they go all right i think we're done and somebody will go like oh i have an idea can i do one more thing which is my favorite thing in the world because that almost always is the thing that ends up in the movie sometimes because we've exhausted all the the known routes to go and so, um, you know, working with amazing, inventive performers like this just makes my job easy. And oh. actually, for Higgins, this is for you. So oh, did you hear that, Paul? It's for me. Oh, finally. He gets one. <laughs> so we talked about the talented and beautiful women, but you, a breathtakingly handsome guy, how is working with Chris Hemsworth? What's that? How was working with Chris Hemsworth? He, he was probably no one well, to Well, first of all, he is one tall drink of water. He is a... I've worked with, with Chris. I didn't work with him on the movie, but he's hosted SNL twice, and he's been on the what I call the Tonight Show. That's what I like to call it. Um, he is a delight. He is. Chris Hemsworth is Beyond. a delight. Yeah. He should not be as fun as he is. There's something... It's like he got... The lottery won in every department, in fun, in looks, <laughs> in humor, in personality. Yeah. He is just a yeah. joy. It's he steps in a room, and he he lights it up. Yeah, and he, it's so funny that first day. Oh, my god! Some of the stuff you see in the beginning with him was his first day, and he was improvising, and we were all crying. Oh, gosh. He's it, so, was, he, it was he, crazy. He, He's such a good guy. It's just like... Out of all the little, like, you get a couple pieces of the pie, and somehow Chris has gotten uh, five pies. Yeah, the entire pie, and it's then like there's, like, part of my and then pie. there's, like, six other pies behind him, just, like, just in case. Just in case you want something else. He's got good cuticle beds. I mean, it really, it doesn't end. It doesn't end. I can go on, but yeah, I won't. He could hit a picture of any part of his body. Eyelid could great be used follicles, as, like, a... Hair fo great like Hair follicle could be used in a diagram of human perfection. So he's okay. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. Let me give a big hand for Paul Fee. Thank Fee, you. Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wick, and Melissa McCarthy.